Kia ora koutou and welcome to South Pacific Muscle. Uh, we've done a bit of uh, musical cheers tonight. So um, next to me, I've got uh, Sean Steiner, who's our guest tonight, and um, he's in the co-hosting seat. So he's going to be asking Michael questions. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> just fucking with you. Um, so we've got Sean. So welcome on board, Sean. Good to have you here. Yeah, cheers, guys. Thanks for having me on. Nah, no worries. And underneath the tucked in the cheap seats, we've got Mike. So Mike, how are you? I see we've all I see we've all coordinated our singlets today. Fuck yeah, who yeah. We'll get the yeah. guns out. Must be warm everywhere. Warm hey, everywhere. We could actually, if someone saw this, they might think it's a fucking uh, interview between three shearers. Because we've all got that kind of <laughs> fucking old school freezing workers or something. Cool, cool. You don't think we've been mistaken for bodybuilders? No, possibly nah, not. Too small for that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gold, gold. Right. Hey, um, Sean, I was going to rattle off your very extensive competition history, but instead I'm just going to say that um, I met you, uh, I think, in one of your first sort of shows around that 211, 212 sort of mark. And, I think it was uh, 2015 at the Pro-Am, because that was my first IFBB show. Nah, I think I, I think I crossed past it before that. Um, anyway... Um, it was a long time ago. You were a junior, yeah. and you were you had a fucking pretty stellar fucking run in the juniors. So, um, do you want to just give people that, that don't know you just talk them briefly through initially your sports and how you got into bodybuilding and a quick rundown of your competition history? Because uh, for a guy who's so young, um, you've done a shitload of comps in that time. So, floor's yours, buddy. Yeah, you had a run at them for a while. Um, so yeah, I did. Um, my first show was in 2014. Um, that was a NABBA Bay of Plenty show. Um, and then after that, I pretty much switched to IFBB. Um, wanted to kick it up a notch. Um, all the better athletes, all the ones that are idolised and stuff were in that federation and I wanted to be up against the best. Um, and yeah, I loved it from then on. And I think, um, I don't know how many shows I've done. I think nine in total. Um but yeah, we, I've got the list on my phone, but I have to rattle through it. But um, yeah, before that, um, active all through school um, in sports, um, basically gave whatever sport um, I was doing at the time, just my everything. Um, rugby right up uh, through probably till about year 11. And then I played rugby, cricket and golf kind of all through high school. And I had to kind of pick one because as you get older and more competitive, it, you know, one takes its toll and, you know, you can't put everything into all three. Um, so I ended up just uh, going with golf. I, I was a big golfer. Um, I got as low as a one handicap, 1.7 I was. So um, I was, handy, I was fairly handy. Um, yeah. And I loved it. And it was, it was great. Um, and then I started picking up weights um, through that time as well. Um, started weightlifting when I was 16 properly like got my first gym membership when I was 16 um and trained with my uh mate um in the hot in the boarding hostel so I went to Hamilton Boys High School um and boarded there for five years so um which was a pretty competitive school and environment in itself um great sporting history there um which was good because it it breeds you to be competitive and you know strive for your greatness and whatever you choose to do um, and yeah, I just carried on doing that and then kind of got to, um, after school, went to university, um, didn't really study, just fucked around. <laughs> can, I just, can I just jump in there? How did you find the weights affected your golf? Because I've tried to play a little bit of golf and um, yeah, really respected. it wasn't, wasn't too bad because I wasn't packing on a lot of muscle when I was fairly active, like with running and everything and stretching and stuff. So you know, I wasn't pushing big weights as such. I was only quite young, but um, did, you know, like, I mean, I was benching and everything still, and I was getting told by golf coaches, you know, stop fucking benching, you know, it's not going to help your golf. And I, at the time, I was like, I don't care. I just want to look mitten on the beach, you know, that's that's <laughs> what I wanted to do, you know. Um, I had terrible acne as a kid, so I was a bit self-conscious about my face. So I was like, well, I can't fix this, so I'm going to, you know, do something with my body. And, you know, it gave me some confidence and stuff. And, um. Yeah, it was, um, I, I don't remember it doing much. I probably hit, started hitting the ball a little bit further, um, but I wasn't involved in the gym long enough 
um, to see, like now I've kind of, I've gone back to golf and I had an eight year layoff. So now, and I've put on a lot of, obviously a lot of muscle since I'm 15 kilos heavier or something since when I was playing golf. And it, it's very different. Like mm. the mind muscle connection of the swim, like the, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, it wasn't, wasn't too bad when I was playing. Um, obviously, um, having a chest session the day before uh, you go and play 18 holes wasn't ideal because um, you'd have real tight chest and you'd be, you know, stretching it out and swinging and you, oh yeah, it wouldn't help. Um, and you could feel it in the middle of your back swing kind of thing. And it would take your mind off the focus. Um, but yeah, it wasn't too bad. Um, like I said, it wasn't lifting overly heavy or anything like that it's not like you got to a point where you were doing both and you had to go actually one of these is going to have to go because my lifting's affecting my golf and if i really want to take my lifting further i've got to give away the golf yeah the, the reason i actually stopped playing golf was um just the pressure of it the pure pressure um it was like you play big tournaments there'll be 140 people in that tournament and you know being a young you know 18 19 year old like you I, I, don't, I don't know it's, you had a lot of anxiety especially with like the first tee off in a, in a big tournament and there was all these eyes watching you you know and if you had a bad shot you know you just like yeah it's crazy like it's weird because I, I tell people this all the time about how the pressure of golf ruined it for me um, and now that I've gotten back into it I'm just having fun and I don't want to get involved in competitiveness again you know um and I like I tell my wife all the time, she's like, but you get up in front of people in a G string, you know, and, and I'm like, yeah, but it's different. And she's like, but how? You know, and I'm, I just can't explain it. It's yeah, because yeah, I don't know. You kind of got to be in both shoes to understand the different the different types of pressure. Right. Yeah. Look, all I know is that when uh, when we crack over that first couple of mil, Mike, uh, <laughs> when we have the when we host the SPM uh, inaugural golf tournament. Sean's on my team, buddy. You get second draft. He's first draft. <laughs> oh, pick, pick old Darren. He's pretty handy too, apparently. Had a yarn to him about a bit of golf. He used to play a bit as well. It's funny, eh? I had a, uh, there was a guy here who was a fucking good bodybuilder, top bodybuilder. And, and my old man said to me once, oh, do you know so-and-so? He goes to your gym. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a bit of a golfer too. And the old man goes, fuck yeah, he's fucking good. You know, he's in the under 23 tournaments and that. Yeah, but he ended up getting canned because uh, he used to fire up and he'd fucking beat the shit out of his bag with his fucking driver one day. Yeah, and that was the end of his golf career. So, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah the old selectors don't like um, you losing the plot a bit, hey? <laughs> yeah, you get, you get pulled aside, you know, especially like I played a little bit of stuff for um, Waikato and stuff, and you drop the old F bomb and get pulled aside and you know, it's not good course etiquette and it looks bad for the team and you're like, yeah, 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 fuck, all right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know it's not a golf uh, podcast, but um, do, do you think that what's developed some of the psychological skills you've developed now, your goal setting, your kind of, uh, you know, anxiety and arousal control, you would have made a better golfer if you knew then what you know now? Nah, because I, even though I'm still playing for still just fun, different. I still feel pressure yeah. going out for a, just a normal hit, you know? Um I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, I'd, I'd have to test it to really do it. But it's like, I guess with bodybuilding, you've done everything within your power that you can um, when you walk out on that stage and you've left nothing behind. Whereas on that first tee, you don't, you've put in all the prep, but you've still got to deliver, you know, whereas that, that peak, the peak's done, you've done all your prep, done everything. And then you just walk out on the stage. All you've got to do is hit your poses, you know, um, that's a lot easier than I think swinging a swinging a club and hitting a ball pretty flush, you know. I in never, front of a whole lot of people. I never really used to feel that pressure when I played golf, but the reason I probably didn't is that back in those days we had the pre workouts that had the effort in, so we'd whip a shitload of those. We'd go to the public course and play no shirts and hit and run and we'd run the holes. <laughs> so it was kind of more of a thing about getting a bit of a suntan and swinging it around. But <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I can imagine that high level um, when, you, when you're when sitting in front of a crowd like that, that would be pretty horrific. But then I guess other people kind of say, well, you know, you've got a lot of people around you, you've got to do that. But in bodybuilding, you've got a lot of people yeah. around you and you're standing in your fucking undies. So they've both got different pressures. And it's funny how I find it, it's quite yeah. interesting how 
the two of them were quite different for you in terms of how you dealt with it. But um, yeah, yeah, it's hard to explain because I mean, like during rugby and stuff, I'd be a goal kicker. Like I played first five, and you'd have a kick, you know, a goal kick to win or something. And that pressure still doesn't compare to that that golf oh, okay. pressure. So, but I thought it'd be yeah. similar. I guess yeah, no, nah, you'd stage, think so, uh, but looking back, I just yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, maybe it was just I gave too much thought into what people were thinking about me at the time. Like if I did hit a crap shot and like what what people were thinking, and kind of now I as a, as I've grown older and matured, I don't really care what people think. You know, like I'll just do me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, you've probably lost all your listeners now because I've just yelled about golf. <laughs> oh, gold. Well, we but, asked the question. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Back to that, um, back to competing. Um, so, yeah, I've done nine shows, my last show being in 2018. Um, so I've had two and a half years since my last show. Um, and that was the, I did the Waikato Champs and then Nationals after that. And that was the first time doing Classic Physique and men's, uh, I, did, well, I carried on doing bodybuilding as well, I did both classes. But yeah, that was my last show in 2018. Sweet. Yeah. Hey, look, um, I'm just bringing your page up now. Um, those people that are interested in following this um, wealth of knowledge, actually, bro, you, I've got to say, you're a very popular man. I got a message before from someone saying, oh, you're interviewing Sean, great pick. And I think the quote was, he's much rad. So, so there you go, bro. You're much rad, bro. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, the Ginger Shred man, if you want to uh, track along with his uh, journey. But the reason I bring this up was um, how old's this one, it's bro? It's a good pick, man. It's a great pick. Yeah. I saw that. Uh, that was uh, last prep, probably like four weeks after the show. I wouldn't, I wasn't putting on weight, eh? It was, I was maybe. I was maybe like a kilo up after four weeks there. Fuck, it's a great um, photo though, bro. I love that photo. I think it was just good lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Helped a little bit. And uh, the tan was still kind of there. It was, you can kind of see it coming off around the bicep. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, those were the good days. Yeah. Hey, um, what sort of feedback did you get on um, classic versus bodybuilding and where you, where you should sit? Did you get anything really solid on that? Um, yeah, Mo rang me. Uh, about a week after the show, we um, just talked about a few things. Um, he wanted me to go for two one two, um, which, yeah, I mean he's he's got he's probably got the best eye for it in New Zealand. Um, but I I love classic. Eh? I just um, I love the artistic posing of it. Like not saying you can't do that in in two one two or anything. Um, but there's there's limits in two one two. I mean like you got to push your body so much harder um everything you know um and What's your I weight just, limit for classic oh i think it was 84 and i was only 79 so i had another five kilos to go um so which i don't know so, I, yeah i'm only i'm only five foot six so i'm 168 oh. centimeters um so not so very show two on two, it's another 10 kilos on top of that, 12 kilos. Yeah, kilos. yeah, which is fucking ridiculous. You know? <laughs> I want to be able to tie my shoes and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I just, yeah, I just like classic a lot more, I think. Um, but then, then um, I've really got strong glute development as well. So I like the bodybuilding side of that because I can show my ass cheeks, you know. And, <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, wasn't that, but that was the feedback. Mo really wanted me to push hard for two one two. Um, and after that show, I was, I was super motivated. And then, kind of just um, uh, that's recent. That's a couple. That's like last week, I think. Um, Still in good nick, bro. Still in fucking. You know, you know, you know. If you if you broke yourself, you could probably pop up on a stage in six weeks' time if you really killed it. That's um two and a half years, Natty. That is. Nice. Yeah. So I'm still sitting yeah, pretty I'm I'm happy with it, man. Like yeah, yeah, I, I don't need people to tell me, you know, um I I'll put it out there like I get the question all the time, when are you competing next? Um it's it's not in my plan, put it that way. Yeah. Um maybe one day. I'm not gonna say no, I'm not ever competing again because um, you know, I've got two two young kids, I've got a three year old son and uh four week old yeah. year old daughter, so four week old daughter. So um, they're, they're my priority, man. And um, last prep I prepped and my son was 
you know, he um, basically, I, I did that prep low key. No one, no one knew, maybe a handful of people knew. Yeah. And um, I remember Shane came up to me after the show and he, um, he said, bro, why did you, um, why did you not, you know, not announce it? And I said, because it was my first time prepping and, and I had a son, I had a dependent with me, Shane. And I was like, I, if I needed to pull the pin at any time, I could do it without, you know, announcing that I'm prepping and then feel the guilt or have people shit talking, being like, oh, I fucking pulled out because he was in shit shape or whatever, you know, blah, blah. And it, it was good because the tw like 22 hours of the day, I would be just focused on family, work, whatever. I wouldn't think I'd just go out, eat my meals. And then for those, once I'm in the gym, it was just, yeah, focus. And then once I walked out, I wouldn't be thinking about prep. I wouldn't be worrying about the next fucking Instagram post or, you know, um, or, you know, updating my followers or something like that, you know. Um, it was good because it just, it was fresh. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it made it, it was, it was an awesome prep. That was, um, that, was that prep was through Kurt. Yep. Um, and he was, it was really good. We got on really well. Um, yeah, he just basically told me what to do and I did it. And yeah. right, one yeah. of the things, uh, one of the things that just listening to you is, um, you know, because the last time you and I would have had a rap would have been, um, you know, five, six, seven years ago, sort of way back that yeah. sort of period. And, um, you have really kind of matured as a, as a, as an adult and, like some of your thought processes are pretty fucking deep, bro, and you analyze the shit out of everything. So, um, it's, and it's really cool to see someone going, you know, like I've got a family and that is, that's my priority. I love yeah. bodybuilding the bits, but it can fit in that little couple of hour space and that's it. And the rest of the time I'm here and I'm a family man. Yeah. So, fuck, that's really cool. Yeah, exactly. to see that, bro. yeah like I did, like I, w I won't say that they, um, like that the last two weeks of prep. I was a piece of yep. shit. I was, um, yeah. I was fucking dying, man. Like I, I got home from cardio. I'd lie on the couch, and I, I couldn't even pick up my son, man. And that, that broke me, man. Like that was shit. And I, I felt real guilty, you know, because he wanted to be picked up and stuff like that. Um, it was quite good because he wasn't really sleeping through the night. So I'd get home from cardio, and they would still be sleeping. So it was kind of good. It gave me a chance to kind of revive. Um, but yeah, I just. Uh, I'll wait till the older, reassess, um, see where I am at life. Got a lot going on at the moment. We just sold our house. Um, so, yeah, I just want to, you know, I don't want to be working forever too, bro. You know, like, I kind of want to, like, i got a bit of a plan, you know, when I'm going to finish work and what all my assets will be and everything. So, um, and bodybuilding is not part of me finishing work earlier. You know, if anything, it's going to make me work longer. So, <laughs> you know, bro. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, I love it. I love bodybuilding, but I don't love it enough to make it a career. And I, if one day I did happen to turn pro, um, and you know, small chance that I could, um, I don't think I'd make a dent in the internet. There's no way I'd make a dent in the international scene. So it's, I don't see it. I see it, like if I did another show, it'd be for fun. Um, the the hopes of the the dream of the pro card was definitely there in 2018, um, but that's gone now. I, yeah. I'm not really focusing on that. It might it might come back one day. Who knows? But interesting yeah, we'll though, like you know, if I think uh, things happen for a reason, and yeah. if you had won a pro card in 2018, it would probably be oh, the, yeah. the end of your bodybuilding career um because yeah, you know you've, sure, you've yeah. got the family there's no way you were going to put, yeah. put them ahead of uh sorry there's no way you're going to put bodybuilding ahead of your family so you wouldn't have possibly even got on a pro stage but um mm. you know like as i say you know you're a young fella and um as you um, get older and your kids get older you find that suddenly you know you do get some of that time back and yeah, 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 you know, for sure. I, I sort of look yeah, at guys that when like um, starts going to, yeah. yeah, yeah. But even like when you look at you know guys that are uh, you know their kids are, are growing up and they're teenagers and that, and they've suddenly got time, then they kind of have their midlife crisis. They either go and buy a shitty sports car, or they go back into yeah, a bodybuilding yeah. show. So you know, um, yeah. and then I think Mike and I. Well, how old's oh, Masters? Is Masters thirty five. I think it's thirty five because I, I think I. I think I entered in the Masters and the Open in 2015. Um, and oh, I, well, that's it's nine. Well, I'm 27 in May, so yeah, heaps of time. Eight bro. years. 
So yeah, 11 and so. 11 and nine. So that's all right. They're, they're, they're dependent. They're, yeah, they can look after themselves by then. <laughs> my kids are uh, my kids are 10, 8 and 5. And I just got back into it a couple of years ago after 20 years off. And I totally hear you, that, that sort of guilt when I'm exhausted. And I know I should be out chucking a ball around with the boys, but yeah. I'm just lying on the couch tired and yeah. that sort of thing. And the, I sort of realise I have to try and, if it's what I'm going to keep doing because I enjoy it, then it can't be peaks and troughs. It's got to be sort of more moderate. It's got to be something that's integrated into yeah. the rest of my life, sustainable. Work doesn't fall apart. Family life doesn't fall apart just because I'm yeah, doing, exactly, doing yeah. this show. So that's kind of hard yeah. to balance, manage and kind of get your head around yeah, yeah she, for sure, she's, yeah. she's different once you throw a few kids in the mix, eh? Um, but yeah. you know, you, know, you, you yeah, do get your time back. You know, I, I remember um, when my kids both both um, first both went to school together, and probably a couple of months after that, I went, "Holy shit, I'm not tired anymore." And I realised that you know when they're young, because you're always up in the night and you always have to occupy them. You, you can't, you know, especially my kids, you know, if you let them loose, they just kind of tore everything apart. And um, you're yeah. always on your eat sort of thing. And, and when they get past that stage, you suddenly kind of go, huh. And it's sort of like, and then as they start getting, you know, into their, in their teenage years and they kind of, you know, they don't want to spend all their time with their parents anymore because they've got their mates and all yeah. that kind of thing. Then you kind of go, oh, I've got a bit of space in here. What am I going to do with it? So if I waited for them to be teenagers, I'd be doing over 60s instead of over 50s. <laughs> <laughs> well, I joked, funny, I joked with uh, Aaron Brinson and yeah, I saw that. Craig today. I said, in about 15 years' time, I'm sure all four of us are going to meet on the Masters stage. So over 60. <laughs> yeah. Aaron is closing in on 50. Yeah, he just put a post up saying yeah. his seven, his first show versus his last show is. Oh no, he, yeah. So he'd be about 49, wouldn't he? Uh he's well, somewhere there, bro. Because he's a yeah, bit I old. thought he was already 50, but yeah, he's, he's, he's up there. Fuck, but well, up here, see, I should say. Did you see the photo? You seen the photo, Mike? No, I didn't see the photo. Oh, I'm gonna. I'll just bring it up, man, because it's fuck. It's neat, man. I like it. Um, he kind of did it, and as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh, you did that in response to uh, Craig's one and he, and he actually said that in his post so let's have a look let's see what we can find look at this how's this for a preview yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool eh although at 6 foot 6 that first show's not bad eh nah that's what I nah, thought, I thought I thought fuck you got some good guns on you you got a bit of legs you know legs, yeah. he's a, he was a handy handy uh, bodybuilder back then but um Holy shit, he's fucking packed some size on. Yeah, it's a cool, cool one. Hey, um, we usually sort of get into all the X's and O's and all that stuff, and, but um, we've got a bunch of questions for you because uh, I put up on the um, Insta anyone to ask questions. So got some questions to shoot around between the three of us. Uh, bear with me, I'll just bring them up. Right, so first question. From Stimrat, um, what's your favourite cheat meal? <laughs> yeah, I read that one. Um, I don't really have one, man, because I um, even in my last prep, I did a bit of flexible dieting, and I do that now. Uh, basically, just I got to set set macros, and I just track that. Um, so I never really crave anything. Eh? Like tonight, we had meatballs and pasta. Like it was like seven hundred cal meal, but it fits within my my macros so it's um i do that basically so i can have a family meal at night um so like breakfast and during the day um not really important to me i'll just i can eat the same shit every day doesn't matter but dinner time i want to you know that's that's family time um but if cool. back when you know if i if i had to choose something it's always uh, i'm a big bk guy love <laughs> love a bit of burger king yeah gold what about you mike what's yours oh for me yeah. oh Oh, I actually, uh, I had a little cheat this evening. I had some of the lasagna the kids have. I do like a bit of lasagna. Um, I, I'm, I'm calling it dehydration, but I dropped a kilo and a half yesterday from morning to morning. Yeah. So it must be dehydration, but I, oh, oh I've dropped so much weight. I can't <laughs> have a week. So I yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, fuck, I, I'm always a pizza guy, man. Fucking love pizza. Pepperoni, man. That's yeah. Happy ass. Yep. Um, from Mo you get a mayo swirl. Mm, yeah, I can do that. I can do try, that. Try mayo swirl. It's fucking not bad. Yeah. I'll probably get a cheap meal in uh, about another 15 weeks. 
Uh, right. So Marwin uh, Solerio has said, big fan of Sean's, been to most of the shows he's competed in. It's becoming more and more frequent to see ex-bodybuilding competitors talk about the process and lifestyle of bodying, bodybuilding and how that's developed a negative mindset around not only relationship with food, but with self-worth and a disabling amount comparing themselves to others. Interested in Sean has personally experienced this, and if so, what practical steps do you take to manage it? Like pretty. Yeah, well, I guess. Yeah, Marwan, yeah, he's one good, good mate, good mate. Yeah, um, yeah um, I guess I touched on a bit of it uh, previously, but um, I guess um, you know that that last prep um, that it sucked not winning. I won't lie, you know, I was pretty disappointed and stuff, and it kind of. Um, just didn't uh, didn't allow the fire to keep burning, I guess. So um, I guess walking off the stage after all those hard yards and stuff, it can put a negative mindset in people's mind. Um, and I kind of, I during bodybuilding, I always looked for self worth through doing a show. You know, um, judges telling me that yeah, you you know you you've got the best physique or what third physique whatever but i kind of feel now that um i'm happy with where i'm at where i am and it's taken quite a long time to get that because everyone experiences it after a show you 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 don't look as good you know and you get into that kind of that they call the post comp blues bullshit you know and um it's it's hard to get back you know and once you start losing all your stirations and everything and get motivated again for the next show um and it was hard because i didn't know when i was going to do an another show and i kind of just yeah put my head down and just um yeah there's, i'm just happy with where i'm at now and it's, it's i don't i don't know if there's such things as practical steps towards it um it was kind of just like i there, there's been times where i've just stopped training for like four weeks and since my last show you know i'll just it's not a priority anymore i guess um, I don't need to be training hard out like I was because I just don't have a, a set goal in mind, I guess. Um, but yeah, the, the bodybuilding competing, it kind of makes you want to have goals all the time. You know, you need to have a goal to go for something, but I'm in a space at the moment where I can just train freely, do what I want, I'm happy with where I'm at. Um, in terms of the food, it didn't really affect me um like kurt was pretty good like we had um most nights was like i'd, I'd do homemade burgers during my prep yep. um like gluten gluten free um and then wraps and stuff like that and i'd keep it you know and it wasn't until about the third three weeks out I, we cut all that kind of stuff out and got a bit more serious to say um so i've never really had a bad relationship with food like it's kind of like um like you'll ask kurt he sent me a plan and i'll, I'll do it just yeah. like a soldier, just fucking do it, whatever's on it. Um, but yeah, I have seen people experience it bad. Like, um, I still weigh my food. I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, I like to know what, how much I'm eating and, you know, but you, I've been doing it for so many years. I've got a good eye for it too. But, you know, there are people out there that are still scared to just have a cheat meal or a meal off with friends, you know, because they think that one meal off is going to, wreck their fucking 52 week prep you know it's like, and there's more to life than that you know um especially if you if you're off season like go have a go have a fucking coffee or some milk you know um go out go out for a meal with friends you know because when you're like 80 and you look back you're probably going to wish that you had that one meal with your mates you know um yeah Cool. No, that's probably as best as i can answer that Marlon. <laughs> uh, that's good um yeah, I, I agree. Like, you know, when, when you're competing, you're sort of chasing, you know, an achievement. And, you know, that, that can be disheartening if you don't get that achievement. But um, I think for me, as time's gone on, I've learned to enjoy the journey more so than the outcome. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's nice. It takes a lot, a lot of pressure off. You know, you're still as motivated as you always were, but in a different way. So different sort of drivers yeah. I, I always advise people that i'm sort of helping prepare for a competition to start out with a um a, a goal that's under their control so visualize what they want to the physique they want to create make sure it's realistic you know put the plan in place to create it and if they stick to the plan that should be achievable therefore 
when they step out on stage, they've already achieved one of the goals. Yep. And if you try and stay focused on that as long as possible, inevitably you put so much into it. But sort of close to the show, you go, fuck, I really want to win. I really want to fucking win. You know, you can't help yourself. Yeah, but the yeah. longer you can stay on that kind of performance outcome, the sort yeah. of process goals, then the sort of better you come out mentally because you go, well, all right, I didn't place where I wanted to, but I, I achieved my goal. I came on stage better than last time. I created what I felt like I could create. So you've had some success there. Yeah. It sort of balances that out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. very good point. Hey, uh, Sean, Ryan Galawata has said uh, that you bring some of the best conditioning at the amateur level in New Zealand, and I'd agree with that one. Um, I'd love to know his thoughts on the average condition brought to local shows in New Zealand and why there is a lack of super shredded competitors at the amateur level. So firstly, between the three of us, do we believe that there's a lack of super shredded competitors at the amateur level in New Zealand? It's gotten better. Yeah. It, it there's, used there's, to be there's generally, a, yeah. there's generally yeah. a few, but, but conditioning isn't always a priority for most athletes. No, nah, it's a, I mean, the no, novice well, athletes will say. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's such a big topic. Like, there's so many variables involved with that. Um, I think first, like, if you're talking about a first-time competitor, I think their goal should be to get as in condition as possible, because they're they're not going to have the size, right? So you got to you got to play to your strengths. Um, I'm not a large guy, so I I play to my strength and get as lean as I can, as early as I can. So when I when I fill out, I I I, I take like um, last last prep like the night before we were eating burgers and cheesecake and shit, trying to fill me out. Um, that, it sucked because I, I, fuck, I was bloated ass throughout the night, but um, it's like, you know, that sort of thing. But um, I was also trying to make weight too. So it wasn't ideal, but yeah, for a first time competitor, I think your goal should be to try and get as conditioned as possible. Um, but then there's also the bigger guys who are too scared to get shredded. You know, they think that they're going to look small on stage. Like, fuck, you see some people who are four weeks out and they look mint and then, they come come to stage day and you're like fuck what happened and it's like you know you, they they shit the bed they thought they were they were looking too small and it's a bit of a mind game you know I think for the for the bigger guys um, but it certainly has got a lot better um, and then I guess another variable would be uh, you know these like magic peak week sort of things like, like people trying to do too much when they you know they're trying to just push the boundaries a little too far. Um, they're looking amazing and then they fuck it up, you know, um, when they should, you know, just to try and look that 1% better. Yep. I reckon um, if we dig into that point before we move on, um, Ian Valier was talking about his uh, latest outing and what he did for the Olympia, et cetera. And um, I think he said he did very similar to his, the show, his previous show, which um, he made a market improvement from when he lost to Hunter. And, and they asked him sort of what he did. And he said, mm. well, nothing really. We just kept it the same right into the show. And yeah. I think in that last week, like you say, people try to do every little thing that possibly can do without any yeah. rationalization behind why they're doing those things. And often, if you did nothing you might look better than, you know, all the different manipulation that they're doing and loading, et cetera. Oh, for sure, um, yeah. Hmm, hmm. Thoughts on that one, Mike? Oh, look, I'm totally guilty of that. You know, yeah. I, exactly what you're saying. Last <laughs> show, I, uh, you know, I had, I had a few issues with my prep and trying to balance out the rest of my life and kind of not over committing and not sort of losing the pot a little bit. So came in a little bit smooth. Then I was trying to, you know, trying to get that last bit, trying to fill myself out. It was just pretty horrendous, and I, and I came in. <laughs> as, as I, but I also had in my mind that I'd really like to be this weight, which was just stupid because if I'd just gone, got off the scales four weeks out and just gone on how I looked, you know, then I'd, I would have looked bigger than probably been three or four kilos lighter. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm guilty of all of that stuff. So that's why this time I'm going to hand it over to someone else to just tell me what to do. Yes. Um, I've got a couple of questions that just got sent to my inbox, so I'm just going to quickly check that. Uh, first one, <laughs> you know, when they go to my inbox, are ones that, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> actually, oh, that's an interesting one. Ask him who he rates and why in New Zealand bodybuilding. Here you go, you're on the spot now, man. Bodybuilding or the the whole 
We'll say the New Zealand bodybuilding is, scene, eh? We'll say New Zealand bodybuilding scene. The define rate. Like um in Who's terms it? of uh like my favorite my favorite person? Yeah, why not? Just favorite competitor? Favorite. Yep. Okay. Um probably Darren Dingle. Do you guys know who Dylan Nash is? Uh, Sorry, who's that? <laughs> Do you know who Dylan Nash is, Nelson Boy? No. No. Can no. you can you um can you go on his Instagram, bro? Yeah, man. Um definitely. I'll show you this guy's physique. It is fucking mental. Oh, he's got he's my favorite physique in in New Zealand. There's what's his name? Uh, there's three there's three classic guys in New Zealand that that could be really Fucking good international pros, man. Um, oh, yeah, they're on. Yep. Let's check him out. He competed with me in 2018. Check this shit out. He's a, he's fucking unreal, man. Like, looks like, and he, he just uh, lives a balanced like... style at the moment. He's um, he's fucking front stage. Gone, front stage he's, yeah, go. He, he throws a back double buy up somewhere, I think. Um. Go go further down. Yep. He's probably gonna hate me for <laughs> No, it's cool. Um, I, I like uh, coming across new 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 people that I haven't uh, bumped into in my journey. So look at that front. That, like he's just got a crazy taper, man. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fully. Is he? Yeah. That, there you go. These are stage photos. He hasn't got a lot up there, but um. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, no, it's good, bro. He he did the 2018 show with me, man, and he's such a nice dude. And um, so there's there's I've got three, man. There's there's him, wow. and then um, you you guys know Nico? No, Not Nico one. Grundy. He uh, Kurt Kurt prepped him in last year or the year before. Okay, we'll check him out. We we'll have to check he's, him out. Eh? He's really good. And then Ryan that just asked the question, um, but but Ryan's turned to. Uh, He's doing marathons now, so he's lost all his fucking muscle. <laughs> but those three um, crazy physiques. Um, yeah. And, yeah, the pool's too big, man. I like, I like Jordan, too. I always talk to Jordan. Yeah. Jordan Neal, um, Darren. Um, Jordan's cool because me and him just talk shit all the time. Like, we'll just <laughs> tell it how it is. We'll send each other. We'll be like, fuck, did you see this? And we're like, fuck you. <laughs> you know, and it's just... You know? uh, yeah, bro. I know exactly. Oh, yeah, shit. yeah. Um, he's a bit like me. He'll just like tell it how it is and not Listen, care. You know? I've got to say, outside of worrying about what physique, people's physiques look like, we've got some pretty fucking cool people in New Zealand bodybuilding. You know, yeah, sure, yeah. bunch of fucking misfits, but uh, yeah. we're all fucking highly amusing. And um, yeah. you know, there's some there's some really at least cool to people. ourselves. Yeah, true, yeah. true. I, I get on with quite a lot of everyone, eh? But um. Yeah, like even um, like we're talking about before, Aaron, he was kind of like um, he'd always hang out with me backstage at shows that we're doing together. Yeah. Um, and he's like, you know, he's like twenty years older than me, but yeah, I just could yeah, relate yeah. so much better with him. And um, he's he's a hard case, eh? He's fucking, oh. you know, telling me like what's on his drink and shit, and he's got all this all this shit in his drink, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, I'll send I'll send you the recipe. And um, I, I remember at the twenty sixteen nationals, um, I was about to go out on stage. I was in the juniors and um. He goes, oh, put this shit on. And I said, oh, what is it? It's that, that hot stuff? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm putting this shit on. It was for the night show. And I'm putting it on. And like 30 seconds in, I'm, fuck, I'm on fire. <laughs> hot ass. And I was like, fuck, bro. He's like, nah, nah, it's going to bring out the ass, bro. Bring out all your veins and shit. And I, I walk out on stage and I'm fucking just start sweating. And I, I want. I, I won, yeah. I won luckily, but Mo came up to me afterwards and he said, what the fuck did you have on your body? And I was like, oh, that stuff shit. He said, don't ever put that on again. He said, it was terrible. I just reacted really badly. That's, um, a, that's a yeah, fucking like, blinder fuck. of a last minute decision, bro. Yeah, yeah. You're walking out here, bro, spray this on. Oh, it's just because, like, you know, he's been in the business for yeah. years and years. And I was like, oh, yeah, it'll be all right. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. And I was pumping up and whatnot, but. Oh, yeah, it wasn't good. Know, no. Paul Wood used to use that hot stuff a lot and see him when he could be. He was just like ripped in his veins everywhere, eh? Hard, oh. rainy. Yeah, yeah the, capsicum, the, capsicum based stuff, eh? Pepper, cayenne pepper and shit like that, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's uh, fucked yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mike, you got any uh, favorites out there in terms of New Zealand bodybuilding, in terms of physiques? 
Uh, oh, I quite like uh, there's a there's a uh, bigger competitor named um, Delaine. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. Can't catch her last name, but uh, she's uh, she's going to do pretty well this year. Well done. What, what else we to say? She's in the other. Room. Other than your wife, who else is, uh, you know, what other competitors do you rate out there? Uh, look, um, I, I, look, we've seen a few of them and it's hard to kind of nail down. I mean, I do, I also like Jordan's physique. I really like that, I really like that classic look. He's got it kind of going on, you know, big arms, you know, good shoulders, that sort of thing. Um, hey, who's your guys' picks this year for um, pro cards? Oh. Throw it out there. Is it too early? Um, I don't know who's competing though, because a lot of the guys last year said I'm not going to compete. But I'm kind of thinking, well, they know they said oh, I want to spend a year to get some size on. I'm thinking, well, they're, doing, they're doing they're doing two classic pro cards, right? Um, and then is bodybuilding doing two, or are they just doing the one? I haven't seen another one showing that there's two, but I know that definitely um, bikini and and um, Classic, and I think men's physique have definitely got two pro qualifiers. I am figure. Oh, well, wow, yep. cool. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, who's going pro this year? I would say Delane Tapp in the figure. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Delane? Anyway. I've um, got my headphones on, you can't hear you. Oh, okay. Um, look, so who's going to go pro this year? Fuck it. You'd, you'd have to say Jordan's going to go close. Um your, your mate, your mate down um, Dunedin, um, Dylan might push him along a bit. You know, I thought he had a good physique if he, you know, if he could nail his conditioning. And, the guy that I just showed you. Oh no, there's a guy down. Uh, oh, Dunedin, okay. He's um, he's not bad, man. He's got a nice little waist. He's got a good shape. Um, is Andrew competing? Sorry, who's that? Is Andrew competing? Andrew, Andrew Murray. Oh, Murray, yeah. Yes. Ooh, ooh. He's, he's probably one that I've left out. I really like yeah. his physique. He's got such nice lines. Like it flows so well. Like nothing speaks more classic than him, I reckon. Um, to me. I just yeah, I really like it. He's got like that big hanging chest and the big round arms, you know. Like when you think classic, you think big chest, big shoulders, big arms, you know. He 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 could go. He could go for sure, yeah. I think um I, think I don't know if he's competing, though, so... You know, Andrew yeah. Murray, he always competes, man, he, every year. So, guaranteed, especially yeah. if there's two pro cards up and given his performance at Tournament of Champions, yep. In the Open, though, I'm kind of like... Mm. Uh, Paris, Ants, and... Well, well, I think, isn't he having the year off? Ants is definitely having the year off. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's Paris's then. Yeah, he could be. Um, oh, Ryan, Ryan down in uh, Wellington. Yeah, is he though? Is he going to? Hey, yeah, yeah. I'd love to see it. He, I've I've heard a rumor, but uh, we'll see. Come on, Ryan. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I'll send him a message later on. Tell him that. Yeah, I can do it. yeah. Get up, get up there. <laughs> right. And um, last question for you, man. Before we um, move on, ask him who his second dad is. Did Aaron ask that? <laughs> a lot of people fishing when they ask questions, right? Eh? <laughs> oh, was that was that Aaron? Yeah, man, that was Aaron. Yeah, fucking <laughs> smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gold. That's gold. Hey, um, I suppose we should uh, talk a bit about training and um, just want to get some tips for guys getting into the sport, newer guys, because we've kind of focused on that a bit lately. Um, what would your just give us your you know words of wisdom in terms of training first for new competitors? Ah, keep it simple. I know, I know that's pretty broad, but um, are they ah? Uh, so what people that have fresh into the gym or oh, like just fresh competing, just just kind of new to the sport, I suppose you know. Yeah, keep it simple. I mean, don't overcomplicate things. Don't, um, like everyone says, don't, you know, do these Instagram things. Um, keep to your compounds. Um, uh, fucking record your workouts. Log your workouts. That's what I didn't do for you. I, I didn't even, I didn't do it any, any prep. I didn't record anything. I wish I did because I would have been better. Um, especially for progressive overload. 
as you know, um, each week looking back, um, right, I did, you know, 140 on squats or 10 reps, either go up to 142 or do 11 reps this week, you know, so it sets that, that you know, you, you know what target you need to hit. As long as you keep going up in numbers, you know, you, you're getting stronger, you're going to grow. Um, yeah, that's, and, and don't overtrain, you know, don't, um, don't spend two, three hours in the gym lifting weights thinking that's when you're going to grow, you know, you grow out, you grow outside of the gym, not in the gym, you know, get in, do it, tear the muscle apart and then go repair and recover, you know. Yeah, no, good, good. Okay, Sean, what would be one of your sort of top tips or, or things that uh, a newbie bodybuilder should know around in terms of nutrition? Um, just keep within the striking range of a show so you don't want to go overboard and look like you're 30 weeks out. Um, out like stay within 8 to 12 weeks, no changes that you're still making, more time to come in really conditioned. Um, yeah, that's basically it, yeah. Cool, man. Good miss. So keep the lean muscles. Got anything new to add to that, Mike, in terms of training and nutrition for newbies? Oh, I just when, when Sean was talking, I just... I just had this, there's no substitute for time. You can't rush the process. You know, you just, yeah. just lots of perfect days in a row and, and it just takes as long as it takes. You, know, you can't rush things by trying to train more often or ram in more food than your body can handle or whatever. It just takes time. Cool. Yeah. Hey, uh, those are really good points. Um, I'm not even going to add to those because I think if people take those points away, they've uh, taken, taken something of value. So, hey, um, as we always do, before we wrap up for the night, Sean, I just want to hand over to you to do a bit of a shout out and a thank you to anyone that you want to give a shout out to that's helped you along the way, supported you, or just deserves a special mention. Um, yeah, I won't name anyone individually because I'll miss out a whole lot of people like I probably did when I was naming my favourite physiques. <laughs> um, but yeah, just anyone um, who's you know been in touch with me you know um, through all the preps and stuff, um, talks to me still today you know um still got some friends through the bodybuilding scene even though i'm you know not competing or looking to compete um still made some lifelong friends so yeah just cheers to all them and everyone in my circle cool man hey uh thank you for joining us and all our very best to you and your uh new addition in your family and mm -hmm. um Let's uh, long may you keep that balance and we will see you at some stage soon, whether it's in the gym or on a golf course. Yeah, man. Sweet. Cheers. Okay, people. Well, thanks, we'll catch Cheers, up. Guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, man.